seal unto it. Um, verse number 28, please. Chapter 10, verse 28. Not, not listening. Okay, ready? Ready? Read. And the rest... They claimed to their brethren, their nobles, and entered into a curse and into an oath to walk in God's law, which was given by Moses, the servant of God, and to observe all and to do all the commandments of the Lord our, our Lord and His judgments and His statutes. And if the people of the land bring wear or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath day or on the holy day, and that we would leave the seventh year and the ex uh, exaction of every debt. For the shoe bread and for the continual meat offering and for the continual burnt offering of the Sabbaths of the new moons and uh, for the set feast and for the holy things and for the sin offerings to make an atonement for Israel and for all the work of the house of our God. And to bring the first fruit of our ground and the first fruits of all fruit of all trees year by year unto the house of the Lord. Also the firstborn of our sons and of our cattle, as it is written in the law, and the first things of our herds and of our crops, to bring to the house of our God, and to the priest that minister in the house of our God. And that we should bring the first fruits of our dough and our offerings and the fruit of all manner of trees, of wine and of oil, unto the priest, to the chambers of the house of our God, and the tithes of, all of our ground, and unto the Levites, the same, that the same Levites might have the tithes in all cities of our tillage. Altogether, for the children of Israel and the children of Levi shall bring corn of the wine and oil unto the chambers where are the vessels of the sanctuary and priests that minister and the porters and the singers and we will not forsake the house of our God. Let's pray, Heavenly Father. Thank you for this verse that we have read. We thank you, Lord, for uh, this uh, uh, resolve and commitment of your people that we can read here in chapter 10. I pray, Lord, that as we study these verses, we may see, dear Lord, things that we can uh, do as well today in the context of the New Testament church. I pray, Lord, that as we read this, we will also strengthen our resolve and commitment to you because you have been good and you have been gracious towards us. I pray, Lord, that you be the one to be exalted in the time that we're going to use to study your word. Help me as I preach. May you, be, may you forgive us of our sins and make us worthy, dear Lord. I pray that everyone will be uh, humbly sitting under the preaching of the word of God and looking, dear Lord, for things that you want to correct in our lives. One of these things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's, um, we're going to study on the title of the message today is uh, whatever, whatever, God. And uh, the response to God's grace, renewal of commitment. But maganda po yun, whatever, whatever. Talagang ubus pera mo dun. The response to God's grace, you know, renewal of commitment. So even though we uh, studied here, we read in verse in chapter 10 and we studied chapter 9 last week, we're going to pick up from the last verse of chapter 9. Now in chapter 9 last week, we have seen the amazing grace of God in the lives of the nation of Israel. His goodness and His forgiveness and His mercy towards them. We have seen their, that their disobedience and their um, failures and their mistakes were 
uh, so little when we compared to the vast grace of God. And even though uh, we looked at ourselves as well, that our mistakes and our sins are just little compared to the grace of God. But we were careful not to minimize sin as well. That though God is gracious, that though God is forgiving, we should not minimize our sin because the moment we minimize our sin then we are making the grace of god a license to sin but the grace of god is not licensed to sin it is rather a motivation for us to do more for the lord what did uh, the bible says in romans chapter 6 verse 1 the bible says here what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace may abound now, to some of us here, or to most of us here, this is a rhetorical question. We know that it's not right, but we will be surprised that in this world today, there are people who actually, to them, this is a legitimate question. There are people who are teaching that it is necessary to sin to release the grace of God. That they have to sin that, so that they can receive the grace of God. And to those people, Paul answers in the next verse, God forbid. No. Is it, uh, is it necessary for us to sin? Is God's grace a license for us to sin? Paul said, no. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So because God's grace is vast, because God's grace is, um, is always there available for us and it's so much greater than anything we're going to commit, it does not give us the license to sin. It actually leads us to more good works. It actually leads us to more uh, serving for the Lord. Why? Because we have read also a verse last week that the goodness of God leadeth us to repentance. Because God is good, because God is great, because God is faithful, we are going to serve Him more. That should be the natural response of a true believer of God. But a, a, a person who is just using the Bible for his own consumption will use the grace of God as a license to sin. That's why there are many people who do not believe uh, one save always save. Why? Because they say that the Baptists or the Christians are just using that as a license to live a sinful life. Because I'm saved, I can live sinful life. Because I'm saved, I can do whatever I want and then end up in heaven. I have a problem with a person living for all his life towards hell and then end this ending up in heaven. That is not true. Because the Bible is clear that when you are really a believer, that you are going to uh, recognize the word of God and you're going to follow and obey that. That is what the grace of God should resort in, result in our lives. Now, the, my... Um, uh, the, the message today is what did these people, how did they respond to the grace of God that they realized and that they saw while reading the word of God? First point here, let's look at the reason of their, their commitment. Though we studied this last week, I want to em uh, emphasize some more upon this. The reason of their commitment is the grace of God. Here in verse number, chapter 9, verse 38, it says here, And because of all this, we make a sure covenant and write it, and our princes, Levites, and priests seal unto it. Now, they are responding, they are ready to renew their commitment to, the, to God because of all this. Now, what does it include? We will, I'd like to remind you today that it includes all this, includes does include their failure because they confess that, but more the goodness and the grace of God. Now, because of all this, they're saying, Lord, because you are good, because you are patient, because you are faithful, because you are gracious and merciful towards God, we are going to new renew our commitment. And they are doing this because uh, of what God has done in their lives. Not to make up for their mistakes. Because they can never do that. Not to make up for the things that they have done wrong. But they are doing this because despite the things that they have done wrong, they saw that God was still gracious towards them. That's why as we do our things for God as well, I'm not preaching here to make up for all my mistakes. Why? Because if that's what I do, just to preach to make up for all my mistakes, then I will, of course I will not run out of reasons to preach. Why? Because there are so many mistakes. But if I do that, then I will run out of energy to preach. Why? Because all I will magnify is all the mistakes that I have done. But I am preaching here today because of God's grace in my life. Because it's God that is pushing me to preach. I'm not preaching because I'm good. I'm not preaching because I'm better than all of you. Why? Because I see in my life that there are many mistakes. That God is continuing to sanctify me, to, to, to make me improve my life and to correct the mistakes in my life. Uh, though I am not perfect, it doesn't uh, stop me from preaching. Why? Because God is gracious in my life. 
Kasi kung ahayaan ko na yung aking mga kamalian na magiging ahad lang para hindi ako mag-preach, then I am frustrating the grace of God in my life. Why? Because God forgave me, God gave me chance, God called me to preach, and because of that, I will preach. Because of that grace, I will preach. Because of the love that Christ has uh, 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 made me feel, I am going to preach. What did the Bible say? 2 Corinthians 5.14 for the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. That's the reason why we serve the Lord. It's not primarily because we love Him. It's because He loved us first. The reason should be because He loved us first. Because if our primary reason is because we love Him, then we're going to someday not feel like loving Him and not serve Him. But if we make His love the reason to press us on every side to continue to serve Him, then we're going to continue to move on and to move on and, and to praise the Lord and to serve the Lord in our lives. So let's not make our sins our, as our motivation to serve the Lord. Para bang, uh, para na maisukli ko na lang yan sa lahat ng kamalian ko sa Panginoon. That is the wrong reason to serve the Lord. The right reason to serve the Lord is because He has been good. Because He has been faithful, I will be faithful towards Him. I will not let my mistakes stop me from doing that. Though I will let Him continually purge me and continually to correct me. But I will serve Him uh, anyway, despite of all these things. Why? Because He's good, because He's gracious. Now, this people says that because of what we have realized, because you are a good Lord, we are going to, uh, to renew our commitment towards you. That's why as, as a believers here, I would like to, to say this morning that giving our lives to the Lord, our whole lives to the Lord, is just a natural response to His grace. It's just natural. And it's not even enough compared to how good He is to us. It's not even, it doesn't even scratch the surface. Even if we live every minute of our lives inside the church, you sleep here, you do everything here, uh, you do everything for the Lord, it's still not enough for what He has done in our lives. Kaya nga po, pagka tayo yung nagkakamali pa, pag sinasayang pa natin yung oras natin, lalo po nating nakikita kung gaano tayo kaliit uh, kumpara po sa, sa biyaya ng Panginoon sa ating buhay. So we keep on serving God. Why? Because of, because God is gracious. Let's not like, make our sin or mistakes our motivation to serve God. Why? Because we're going to burn out. We're burn out ka. Nagkamali na naman ako, preach na naman. Kailangan ko na mag-preach. Nagkamali na preach na naman. Nakakapagod po kung yun ang ating uh, uh, buhay kristyano sa paglilingkod sa Panginoon. Why? Because people who preach behind this puppet, wala po kayong matuturo sa amin na perfecto. Kahit si Kuya Alex, hindi mo masasabing perfecto yan si Kuya Alex. Why? Because we are all still being sanctified by our God. We're still all being corrected by God. But we should be willing to be corrected pagka tayo nagpipreach. Why? Because we cannot expect people to be willing to be corrected if we ourselves are not willing to be corrected by God. But despite of all these things, God has been faithful to call us to preach anyway. God has been faithful to call you to sing anyway. To serve anyway. So because of that, we serve God. Because of that, we're faithful to Him. So that is the reason for their commitment. They're renewing their commitment because of that. Now, the, the, up to from verse, chap, uh, uh, verse number 2 in chapter 10 until verse 27, we see here that there are so many names. And some of them we can't even pronounce. And we have to go to history to find uh, uh, all of these things. So we're not going to do that. But we, are go we realize here that these names that are written here in chapter 10 are the names of the leaders of the families. The, not all the names of all, the, uh, all, all Israel, because it will take more than one chapter to do that. But these are the names of the leaders only. That's why you cannot find the name of Ezra here. Why? Because he's not the leader of his household. Okay, so now, only the leaders of the household. Now, when they renewed their commitment because of the grace of God, I want to make my second point here. It started with the fathers. It started with the leaders. All of these names you're going to see here are leaders of their houses. They are the fathers. They're the leaders of the community. They're the leaders of families. Why? Because the commitment to the Lord and resolve towards God should start with the leaders of the family. That's why God designed the fathers to lead. That's why God designed the fathers to be the one uh, 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 bringing their families closer to God. More often than not, if the father has a resolve to serve the Lord, the family will follow. But if it is the son or the wife who has more resolve to follow the Lord, it is even more difficult to bring the whole family. That's why if the father gets saved first, mas madaling madaling buong pamilya. Pero kung na anak ang nauna, mas maraming persecution at 
maraming uh, salita pa bago makumbinse. Right? But if it's the father, since naturally, it's God's design for the father to, to uh, for the family to follow the father, then it has a better result and even faster growth in the work of the Lord. Here in, uh, uh, I want, under this, I want to say that as fathers, we are to lead our families in our resolve to follow the Lord. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 to 27. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it, in the, with, the, it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle, or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Now, we see here in verse 25 that husbands are firstly commanded to love their wives. Now, we have to love, love them compared to the Christ love for the church. But then, we have heard a lot of preaching towards, uh, about this, so I'm not going to expound upon that. But what I want to expound is to, uh, to put the comparison back from Christ to the church to the Father. Verse 27 here says that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that it should be holy and without blemish. Now someday, Christ is going to present his bride, the church, okay? His bride, um, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle. Okay, how does he do it in verse 26? That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So now compare it back to the, to the husband or to the father or to the leader of the family. Leaders are to slowly lead his family towards uh, uh, the, the sanctification that God is working in their lives. Lalo natin ilid yung family natin closer to the Lord as Christ is leading or purging the church. Fathers are, are to purge and to lead and to correct the ways of their families. That is what we should do. That's why as fathers, we should be the ones leading the family towards a, a, a stronger resolve towards God. Tayo yung dapat nag encourage sa pamilya natin na lalo maging matapat, lalong, uh, lalong malapit sa Panginoon, lalong maging matatag para sa Panginoon. Why? Because we are the ones expected by God to do that. Not the wife, not the, not, not the children, but the father. You should be the one, uh, we should be the one setting an example in uh, studying the Word of God. Setting an example in praying to the Lord. Setting an example in standing for God. Why? Because our families, whether we like it or not, will follow the example that we show them. Now, we should be the ones leading our resolve towards God. And, and, and uh, next point I want to put under this is, we should be the first ones to agree with God's Word. As fathers, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 to 9, and these words which I commanded thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. And when thou walkest by the way. And when thou liest down. And when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand. And they shall be as uh, frontlets between thine eye. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. Now, the most ideal situation in a family is the preaching of the Word of God will confirm your message to your family. Para bang nasa bahay ka, pinangangaralan mo ang iyong pamilya, nagde-devotion kayo, at pagdating nyo sa church, kino-confirm ng preaching na yun nga ang tinuturo mo sa bahay. That is the most ideal situation. But sadly, it's not uh, really what's happening most of the times sa ating families. But the next best thing should be us confirming the Word of God in our houses. Right? Look at the verse. Sabi niya, pag uwi nyo, pag kumakain kayo, bago kayo matulog, pag gising nyo, dapat nakalagay yan sa gitna ng inyong mga mata, isulat nyo yan sa pader, isulat nyo yan sa mga post. You, your life should be governed by the Word of God. Starting with the Father. It's the Father who is expected to lead their families to make the Word of God center in, in their lives. And we should be the first one as Father. We should be the first ones to confirm the message of the Word of God sa ating, bu sa ating mga pamilya. You know, the, sometimes the problem is it, it, uh, it is the fathers who are the first ones to water down the preaching. Right? I, I, I don't know if, uh, if some of us are guilty about this, but I, I'm pretty sure I'm guilty about this sometimes. When we go home, right, we heard the preaching. Uh, it's already good if we discuss the preaching at home. That's good. But sometimes we don't even do that. But when we do discuss at home, we water down. Ay, masyado lang hot si pastor. Hindi naman talaga ganyan. Ganto dapat. 
Right? What message are we giving to our families? Not to listen to pastor? Or not to listen to the preaching of the word of God? Or to water down the preaching to our own liking? No, if the fathers are the first ones to do this, watering down the preaching, then we're not going to lead our families to really make the word of God center in our lives. That's why here in the church, when we study something and we, and we, uh, and we uh, 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 read the Word of God, we preach the Word of God, the job of the fathers is to review that at home. When we get home, sometimes, minsan korne na, preaching na sa church, preaching pa sa bahay, devotion pa sa bahay. Well, that is the, what God is expecting of us, to, to confirm that. And if, if, if uh, need be, to even dig deeper para sa ating pamilya. Why? Because that is our duty and that is our uh, responsibility. Now, um, minsan, kadalasan po, and makakalungkot, if yung mga tatay pa ang walang resolve sa Panginoon. Right? If after we hear the Word of God, families are ready to stand for God, but it was, it's the Father who will throw water to their burning hearts and say, hey, cool down, relax lang, wag ganun. Um, nakakalungkot po pag ganun ang sitwasyon sa, sa pamilya. Why? Nakakahiya actually if you're the Father and you're the ones who lack resolve. To the, uh, towards the Word of God. If you're the one who lacked standing for the Word of God, if you're the one who lacked uh, uh, willingness to fight for the Word of God, I don't know for the life of me why there are people who think that it's a waste of time to argue for God. I don't know why. For the life of me, I cannot understand why there are people who think that it is a waste of time to stand for God and argue for God. Especially for men. For fathers, for me, it is really, if, if you're not willing to do that, it is a waste of you being a man. It's, that, it's, it's more a waste of you of being a man than a waste of time for arguing. You know, last night, Palu, I saw him arguing with his, uh, a little bit only, with his sister outside the gate. Because, uh, I don't know, they're offering him uh, riches of this world. Uh, no, they're offering him a motorbike and a uh, $200 allowance. A month just to live with them and to work with them but uh, I saw that uh, I, I heard him uh, shout one time hey, atout, hey. so he said something like that I will not go that's what he said he argued like he said uh, no he said no to them right but then after that I told him uh, uh, nah. I told him that next time argue with the right words right I, 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 I gave my life to the Lord I love the Lord and the, uh, the reason why I left this is because I know that this is a higher calling and all of these things why because when you say that his sister may not agree at the moment but when they realize that someday God will use that argument in their lives kasi nasa isip nila yan eh. that's why in Facebook parang nakakasawa bawat thread na lang ulit ulit yung sinasabi na ulit ulit din naman yung sagot mo but when they somehow realize their mistake someday Right? God will use that argument in their lives someday. Why? Because it's not a waste of time to argue for God. It's never a waste of time to argue, to argue for God. Why? Because that is, parabang, uh, kung if we shy away from those discussions, if we shy away from those words, then all the things, and the people who are reading, people who are not really active in commenting, but are just reading, will instead side with the compromise. And even today, it is high time that people hear the side of God, the side of the truth, more than the side of the compromisers. Amen. Why? Because we're giving them more chances to do that, uh, to, to, uh, to believe God and to uh, uh, to side with God. And sometimes we hide behind the uh, spirituality and maturity. Uh, yung mga, kasi matured ako, hindi, hindi ako nakikipag-debate. It's not, that's only a disguise. It's not really spiritual. It's not really maturity. But I don't know, in, 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 in our own way, maybe we do that, maybe not really publicly. But if we're not doing it at all, then it is a waste of our time. Not, it's, it's not, and, and it is something that we are not called to do. We are called to be fathers. We should be the ones leading the peop, our families in the war towards mistake, in war towards error, in war against people who are not really obeying the word of God. And I'm willing to give anyone the time to prove that I'm wrong, that we are not to argue for God. And I have yet to find anyone or to read anything uh, saying that we are not to uh, 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 there's one pastor that I look up to he's young like me uh, because he's, I look up to him because he's really brilliant he's smart and uh, he's really good whenever he posts something it's nice but then uh, the other night uh, I saw uh, I, think, uh, I think our pastor preached in his church uh, uh, recently the last time he went back 
I saw that, you know, BHYC, I've been in two or three BHYC conference, Baptist Heritage Youth Convention or Youth Conference. But the, the few times I've been there, I realized it is a brainwashing event, political event, and nothing else. That's all it is. And they know that, but, they, but this pastor gave his commitment to send his youth there. You send these young people there. When they, don't, they, they all also have their own youth conference. For me, that is a lack of discernment. And, and it's sad to say, but if you really are a, a person with discernment, you're going to run far away from anything that MBBE is organizing. Anything at all. Why? Because all they're doing is o- always towards a political agenda, and you cannot prove me wrong. Because of the, uh, you can never prove me wrong. Uh, because that is the truth. So now, fathers should be the ones to start with this. Resolve for the Word of God. Standing for the Word of God. Making the Word of God central in our families' lives. It should be the fathers. If the fathers here in Israel did not start by committing to the Lord, no revival will happen at all. Now, what is their next response? Number three, one response to God's grace to them or to us in our context as a church is unity. In verse 28, it says here, And the rest of the people, the priests, the Levites, the porters, the singers, the Nethanims, and all they that had separated themselves from the people of the lands unto the law of God, their wives, their sons, and their daughters, everyone having knowledge and, have, er, everyone, and having, having understanding. Now, because of the example set by the leaders of the country, by the leaders of the families, wives and sons and daughters, everyone followed suit. Everyone was willing to be united in this renewal of commitment to the Lord. And it is such a wonderful sight to behold. Just imagine what's happening. Everyone coming together and proclaiming to God, Lord, we're renewing our commitment. Lord, we're renewing our uh, covenant towards you. We're willing to obey. We're willing to follow. And it's everyone who did that. Wala pong naiwan sa bahay. Wala pong naiwan sa kanilang mga trabaho. All of them came together and renewed their commitment. What a wonderful sight to behold. Kaya nga po sabi ng Psalms 133.1, Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Napakaganda po. It's wonderful to see that the church is coming together united for the cause of Christ. Napakaganda po to see the church united for fellowship, united to reach the lost, united to do all these things. And of course, we note that the unity here is towards the brethren. Locality, local church. Kasi hindi po sila, take note here, that even though some of them already have foreigner wives and foreigner husbands and they have mixed multitude, they separated themselves from them and then only the Jews were united. Hindi po kasali yung nasa labas. That's why unity in the Bible, and if we put it in the context of the New Testament, God expects unity, correct? But God expects unity in the local church. He did not design for every believer to come together and have one organization and one union uh, and, be, uh, and, and be together in that way. Why? Because God in all His wisdom knew that what He needed were local churches united for Christ and, 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 and doing the great commission of Christ para lalong mapatupad ang kanyang, ang kanyang mission here. Why? Because if we are only one group, we are one organization, then the devil only has to kill the head and we're all dead. And, 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 uh, and I do believe that sabihin natin na if we join together uh, for soul winning, all of these things, that it will speed up the gospel, it will speed up the work of Christ. Maybe it will. Right? Because you're working together with other people. But, some, uh, but uh, uh, somewhere along that line, when there's a hurdle, it will halt everything. Bakit? Kapit-kapit tayo eh. Pero kung ginagawa natin as a local church yung ating mga ministry, kahit may isang tumumba, meron pang ibang gumagawa. Kahit may isang mawala, meron pang magpapatuloy. Why? Because that is the wisdom of God. He, he uh, established local churches so that they be united inside that body and be strong for the Lord and go for the Lord and other churches will do what they have to do. And in, in, pagdating naman sa langit, samasama rin naman tayo. Doon na lang po. Hindi po dito. Because what we are commanded to do is to be united within our brethren, within the body, within, uh, within the local church. That's why uh, if, we, if we continue to preach, if we continue to do this, later on we're going to look here more. But here, ang unity po natin, ang atin pong dapat unang uh, priority is to be united with our brethren here in the local church. Because if we seek to unite outside people outside the church, and we ourselves are not united. It's hypocrisy. Right. 
tayo-tayo hindi nagkakasundo pero gusto natin makasundo natin ibang tao. That's wrong. Dapat dito muna magkaisa tayo. Dapat dito muna magkasundo tayo. Dapat dito muna mag-agree-agree tayo. And if you're not in agreement with the church and you're in agreement with someone else and some other church else, then go join that church. Why? Because then you can be you can obey the will of God to be united there. But the will of God in this church is for us here, the members of this church to be united and to agree with what we are preaching behind the pulpit. Amen. And we are in a good position to do that. Why? Because by the grace of God, everyone is encouraged to voice out their opinion, whatever they have in mind, or no man ang hindi mo nagustuhan, you're encouraged to voice it out so that for the sake of uh, solving that problem and being united. But some people are too proud to voice out their opinion. Some people are too proud to unite with everyone else. Wag po natin hayaan na yung pride natin to get in the way of the unity of this church. You don't like something, talk to the pastor. You don't like something, talk to the preachers. Or even open it up during our Sunday afternoon uh, 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 interactive service. Why? All of these things we're doing, para naman magkasundo-sundo po tayo. Why? Because God will, uh, God's blessings or God's power is hindered if we ourselves are not united. Pagka hindi iba-iba ang isip natin, iba-iba ang goal natin, iba-iba ang gusto natin, and, 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 and uh, much worse is nasa iba ang loyalty natin. Because, yes, our loyalty to, should be to God alone, but after that, loyalty should be to each other and to our church. Okay? Uh, yung iba sabi, after God, ang loyalty mo dapat sa pastor. No. After God, loyalty should be to the church and to the brethren. That's why one of their response is unity. And the reason why they got this unity was because uh, they, what they call this, they, uh, the, the leaders started it. Okay, and they followed suit. Here, uh, our fourth uh, point here, we see in verse 29. They claimed to their brethren, their nobles, and entered into a curse and into an oath to walk in God's law, which was given by Moses, the servant of God, and to observe and do all the commandments of the Lord and our Lord and His judgment and His statutes. Point number four, committing to the Lord includes acceptance of the consequences when we obey, we disobey. Look at the verse again. They claimed to their brethren, their nobles, and enter into a curse and into an oath. That means they are willing to obey the Lord, but they are also willing to suffer the consequences if they fall into disobedience again. You know, whenever God gives a covenant, especially in the Old Testament, there's always a curse co that comes with it. And sometimes the curse includes death. That I will give this covenant to you, I'll bless you, all of these things. But if you don't obey, this is what's going to happen. But if you don't obey, you're going to be cursed. If you obey, I'll bless you. That's the covenant. And th this is the covenant that they're renewing to the Lord. Uh, but as much as they're willing to obey, they're also willing to suffer the consequences if they disobey. Kaya po sa atin, when we commit to God, even though today there's no more curse, but there is chastisement. There is discipline. And if we decide to uh, uh, give ourselves to God and commit our lives to God, we should be willing to suffer the consequences as well when we disobey God. We should be willing to be disciplined as well. Hindi lang po puro yung blessing I expect natin. Let's also expect the discipline of God when we disobey Him. Because why? This is one part of God's love toward us. Discipline. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5. And, have, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Why? For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. This part of God's love towards us. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. That's very clear. If God is not chastising you, you better watch out. Okay? You better not cry. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? Kung tayo willing tayong mapalo ng ating mga tatay, why are not we willing to be chastised by God? For they, for they verily for a few days chasten us, and sometimes it's after their own pleasure. But He for our profit, that we might be partakers of His holiness. Even when God is disciplining us, it's still for us. 
hindi lang, hindi lang, not only for his pleasure. Now, no chastening for the present seems to be joyous, of course, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. If we follow the Lord, we should expect discipline from God. Why? Because we can never perfectly follow Him. We're going to commit mistakes along the way. We're going to fall. We're going to stumble. And God, expect that God will discipline us. And there are many ways that God disciplines His children. There are many ways that God disciplines us. Sometimes it's suffering. Kaya nga po, sometimes when we suffer, wag tayong laging iniisip na, uh, oh, God is testing me or whatever. Most of the time, we suffer because of our own doing. We suffer because of our own mistake. And God is making us suffer to discipline us, to get our attention, so that we are going to correct our ways. So when we enter into commitment with God, we realize that there are consequences to every action we're going to do. And the moment we realize that, then mas madali natin differentiate yung uh, kanyang testing at ang kanyang purging, kanyang discipline sa ating buhay. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 28, But let a man examine, examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. And it is true that sometimes God uses sickness to discipline us. God uses that. And does it, I'm not saying that every time someone is sick, ay dinidisiplina ng Panginoon. Huwag naman po tayong ganun na maging ugali natin. But sometimes, God uses that to get our attention. Para bang, hey, wake up. Mali ang ginagawa mo. That's why. Because when you're sick, you're sitting down, you're lying down, all you're doing is thinking. And God will help you meditate upon that. So, as, as much as they're willing to follow the Lord, they're also willing to enter into a curse with Him. Lord, I'm willing to be disciplined if I commit mistake. And Lord, please, discipline me if I do. Uh, point number five. One way to honor God's grace, we see this in verse 30 and 31, and that we would not give our daughters unto the people of the land, nor take their daughters for our sons. And if the people of the land bring wear or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath or on the holy day, and that we would leave the seventh year and the exaction of every debt. One way to honor God's grace in our lives is separation and complete loyalty to God's word and will not compromise no matter what. One way to honor God's grace is separation and complete loyalty to God's word and will not compromise no matter what. Now in verse 31, we can see here that their commitment to the Lord is a little different from the law of Moses. Because in the law that Moses gave them was during Sabbath day, no work at all. Lahat pahinga. Wala kang makita na nasa labas. But during this time, impossible na nila magawa. Why? Because there are already foreigners living with them. So, these foreigners do not care about the Sabbath. So, they, parabang they modified the commitment. Kaya sabi nila, that on the Sabbath day, even though these people, these foreigners will continue to sell, continue to work, we're not going to buy. Kahit bentahan nila kami, hindi kami bibili. Because we know this is a holy day unto the Lord. And every day that you consider holy Lord, we're not going to do any business with them. It may affect our living, it may affect our comfort, but our commitment to you, Lord, is we are not going to do any business with these people because that's what you command. They were willing to separate and they're willing not to compromise for the Lord. And, and being uh, uh, fa fast forward po sa, sa panahon natin, when we got saved, the Lord sanctified us. The Lord set us apart for Him. And we should not frustrate that work of God. Or we should not frustrate the grace of God. And then, para bang lalo pa natin, ibalik natin ang sarili natin doon sa mga bagay na inalis na ng, pang, tayo, ng Panginoon doon sa mga bagay na yun. Why? Because God already separate us and place us in the, in, the, uh, in the presence of believers. Wag na po tayo humalo pa doon sa mga tao na, na uh, niligtas tayo ng Panginoon sa kanila. Why? Because again, we have studied this evil communications corrupt good manners. Kaya ka po sabi na, if God has separated us, continue to be separated from the world. Continue to be separated for Him. Continue to be uh, repentant of the things that we have done. Not to go back to those things. Not to do those things again. But to continue to obey the Lord and His will. If we are really appreciative of God's grace, ganun po ang gagawin natin. Psalms 97.10 the, the Bible says, Ye that love the Lord hate evil. He preserved the souls of His saints. He delivered them out of the hand of the wicked. But sometimes, bumabalik pa tayo doon. Sometimes we jump back into the wicked. Sometimes we jump back into the presence of the ungodly despite the fact that God gave His life to save us from that. 
Despite the fact that God has gave His life to save us from the power of sin, we still try to uh, surround ourselves with people who are sinful. Kaya nga sabi ng verse, yung mga tunay na ligtas, they hate evil. They will not rejoice in the presence of evil. They will not rejoice in the presence of unrighteousness. Sadly today, ganun na nangyayari sa atin. Even though it's evil, even though it's not right, minsan na-enjoy pa natin. Minsan, tuwang-tuwa pa tayo. You know, it's not only that we are to separate from these people, from these unrighteous people, but we are also to separate from brethren who are not willing to obey the word of God. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause Romans 16, 17, cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. And for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the sinful. When we enjoy the company who enjoy false teaching, then we don't really love the truth. And I don't know, why do we enjoy the company of people who, enjoy, uh, who teach false doctrine? Why would you enjoy their fellowship? Why would we seek for their fellowship? God do not like what they're doing. We should not like what we're doing as well. Our problem today is we declare our love for the truth. We declare our allegiance to the truth of God, but it's only lip service. Salita lang. We say we love the truth. We say we love God. But our works will say otherwise. We are more than willing to compromise for the right reasons. Right? If the price is right, I will not obey the word of God. If the condition is right, I will not obey the word of God. I would like to illustrate this with my love for Kobe Bryant. When I was younger, I am the ultimate Kobe Bryant fan. You cannot find anyone who loves him more than me. Right? In my room, there's, uh, uh, I have posters of him, right? I'm not gay. I just love his uh, love. Behind the door, there's a calendar there. And the calendar na yun, hindi para malaman ko yung araw. I put that calendar so that I know the schedule of the Lakers games and what time they're starting so that I'm sure that I wake up before the, their game. Okay? My day is dictated whether or not the Lakers will win or lose. If they lose, my day is ruined. And even if they win and Kobe Bryant scores less than 20 points, my day is ruined as well. Why? Because I want him to win and do well at the same time. I hated Steve Nash a lot because he stole two MVP trophies from Kobe. I mean, I cannot understand. A person who cannot guard a little child wins MVP. I don't know why. That's why I hate Cedric before because he's the ultimate Steve Nash fan. And I hate Steve Nash. So sometimes we get, oh, most of the time we get into arguments. Bago kami maglaro ng basketball dyan, mag-aaway muna kami ng Steve Nash, Kobe Bryant, tas sikuhan sa basketball. Ganun po pag ko kay Kobe. And, and uh, on the internet, I will not back down from arguments against Kobe Bryant. Especially those people who will bring up his rape allegations. Kung pwede lang mumurahin, mumurahin ko yan. And I was blocked by a lot of my close friends because of that. Right? That's how I love him. I will not, uh, 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 para bang, hindi ko papalagpasin na mayroon ko sasabihin na mali sa kanya. At hindi ka natitigil at di mo binabawi yung sinabi mo. Right? Today, fast forward to today, if magkakomment ka sa Facebook negative against my wife, it's not going to be okay with me. Right? Especially so, if it's not true. At kahit totoo pa, pag kinoment mo, magagalit ako sa'yo. And I will also fight for that because I love my wife. Right? That is how you show it. You really love it, right? But then compare it to our love for the truth. We read something on Facebook that is mocking the truth of God, mocking the name of God, but we keep on scrolling. Do you really love the truth? Ah, ayos lang yan. Intindihin na lang natin. Baka magkaaway pa. Hayaan na lang natin. Right? People who are de destroying the name of God. People who are destroying even the name of the Baptist group. Okay lang sa atin. It's okay for the sake of friendship, for the sake of fellowship, for the sake of friends, for the sake of family. All of these things I've said, you love more than the truth of God. And that is the ugly truth. Everyone is guilty. We are all guilty of something that we love more than the truth of God. We are all guilty of something that we love more than God. Why? Because uh, I have posted the other day, if you want to know who controls you, look at who you are not allowed to criticize. Kung sinong kinakatakutan mo magalit sa'yo, yun talaga ang Diyos mo. 
Kung sino yung kinakatakutan mo mawala sa buhay mo, yun talaga ang Diyos mo. Kung sino yung kinakatakutan mo na mawala sa fellowship mo, sa circle mo, yun ang tunay mong Diyos. Hindi ang Bible, hindi ang Diyos ng Bible. And that is the ugly truth. And I'm giving you time to prove me wrong otherwise. If you can prove me wrong, prove me wrong. Why? Because if we really love the truth, we were not going to let those words pass by without even just reacting negatively or just telling them what the truth is. You don't have to be argumentative. You only have to state the fact that is contrary to what they said. That's all you have to do. But for the life of me, I don't understand why people do not have the time or the guts to do that. Why? Because we don't really love God. We don't really love the truth. We love friendship more. Right? We hide behind the disguise of spirituality and maturity and mas nakakaintindi ako, kaya intindihin na lang sila kapatid. Pag ginawa yan sa asawa mo, wala kang gagawin. Anong klaseng asawa ka? Right? If people will say bad things towards your wife and you're just gonna take it sitting down, you're not a good husband. You're not willing to die for your wife. And you're not willing to die for the truth of God. And we must realize that in our lives, wala po tayong ganong klaseng resolve. But if God is gracious in our lives, ano ba naman yung, pag, ano ba naman yung friendship? Ano ba naman yung fellowship? Someday kung tunay na ligtas yan, we're gonna have all the fellowship we want in heaven. But as long as we're here on earth, let us continue to fight for what's right. Let's continue to fight for the truth. Let's continue to love the Lord more than we love all of these people. So what kung umuwi tayo, may marami pa rin tayong kaibigan. So what kung umuwi tayo sa Pilipinas, marami pa rin magi invite sa atin. Ano naman? Right? Alam mo naman na ang price, the price that you had to pay was to scroll. Keep scrolling. Keep scrolling. But that is something that says a lot sa ating puso, sa ating affection. Do we really love the Lord? And I hope and I pray we're gonna have that resolve not to let anything slide, lalo na pagka it's destroying the truth of the Word of God. And last point here, number six, their last response uh, okay, was to prioritize the work of God. Verses 32 to 39. We have read this kanina. All of their commitment, renewal of the Lord, was towards the temple towards the workers of the temple, towards the work of God. So sabi nila, Lord, lahat, all of our uh, first fruits, bibigay namin, tithes, ibibigay namin, susuportahan namin yung priests, magsasacrifice kami. Because of God's grace in their lives, it pushed them to prioritize the work of God. Of course, wala na yung temple ngayon. But going to, our, to the context today, because you realize that God is good, because you realize that God is grateful, you're going to commit yourself to the church of God. You're going to live your lives for the ministry. You're going to live your life for God. Why? Because this is the church that God built and this is the church that God is being glorified. And because you love the Lord, because you realize the grace of God in your life, you're going to renew that commitment and I'm going to prioritize the work of God in my life. How do we prioritize the work of God in our lives? By our resources, by our time. Yesterday, we, were, we, uh, we realized yesterday by the report that uh, our pastor gave us that our giving went down. And that means that maybe... One of the reasons is that we, uh, uh, the priority of the work of God in our finances maybe went down a few places. Baka po yun nangyari. What, what did the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 8, verse 7 to 8? Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith and utterance and knowledge and in all diligence and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. What is this? The grace of giving. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. How do you prove that you really love the work? How do you prove that you really love the work of God? By giving or sacrificing your resources to give to the, to the work. By prioritizing the work even in our resources. And even though the context of this church is God, is a uh, Paul asking the Corinthian church for help for Jerusalem, but Paul's uh, uh, principle towards them is very simple. As you, uh, as you grow in faith, as you grow in knowledge, as you grow in diligence in the work of God, don't forget to grow in your giving as well. Right? Uh, if I may borrow the words of the great uh, 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 Joey Sauco, uh, when uh, uh, when when you're, when you're uh, blessed more, don't raise the standard of living, raise your standard of giving. Amen. Amen. What a blessing. Right? You know what I'm saying? Okay? Yun po, you should raise the standard of why? Kasi po, God's design was for the members of the church to be the ones to provide for His church. To the members. And God will not lack providing for your needs at ibibigay din naman sa atin ng Panginoon yung dapat nating ibigay sa gawain ng Panginoon. 
It's the other way around. I, uh, as I have said in our class this morning, I read uh, one friend of mine, he po she posted, uh, the more you give, the more you receive. Which is wrong. It's not the economy of God. It should be that the more you receive, the more you give. And if this is true, then uh, our church giving, it indicates that we receive less in this year. I don't know if that's the truth. But if it's not, that means we are lacking our resolve in giving to the church. So these people, they were willing to give the first fruits, willing to give the tithes. They're willing to give all these things for the work of the Lord. Not only uh, uh, were the, uh, were, are we to prioritize God in our uh, finances, but we are to prioritize God in our time as well. We all have ministries in this church, and we should always put it on top of our priorities. The ministry. Kung meron po tayong ministry, unahin po natin yon kaysa sa mga worldly things. Kaysa sa mga bagay sa mundo. And I know we have to do a lot of things. Uh, especially, we're working Monday to Friday, Saturday, Sunday na lang po ang ating free time. And we, we want to do a lot of things. But, instead of doing that, let's still prioritize the ministry of God. And watch how God will bless us. Maybe not financially, but God will give us a lot of uh, spiritual blessings. Nakakalungkot po minsan, marami pa tayong unahin kaysa sa gawain ng Panginoon. You know, that's why, again, it's a question, again, of whether you really love the work of God or not. Right? And, and I, I, I cannot deny it. I love basketball. And I will, I'm always frustrated when we don't play. Pinaprioritize ko yun, nakaschedule yung laro. At pag hindi tunupad, nakakainis. Right? Because I love it. But dapat mas mahal ko ang gawain ng Panginoon. Na pag hindi natupad yung ministry ko, dapat mas lalo ko madisappoint sa sarili ko. I should hold myself to that kind of standard as well. If we really love the work of God. These people said, because of their, God's grace, their response was, Lord, we're going to support the temple. We're going to support the Levites. We're going to do all of these things. Lahat ng inutos mo sa amin. One example na ginawa ko po sa buhay ko, or, or na, na, uh, naka-encourage po, one person who encouraged me in um, the ministry was Sir Kenneth Gomez in Bible Baptist Temple of Pampanga. He's actually the one who really discipled me when, uh, during the three years that I was there. He's our choir director and I was his assistant. But one thing that I'm really blessed in his life was no matter what happens, he's going to fulfill his ministry towards God. He lives far away from the church in Mexico, Pampanga. That would be, uh, uh, yeah, two rides. He, although he has his car, it's still a long drive. Mexico, Pampanga. But he's always first to practice, last to leave. First to arrive, last to leave. And though his wife gave birth, minsan may sakit siya, knowing na kaya ko naman i-handle ang practice, as long as kaya niya, darating at darating siya. Why? Because it's his commi commitment to the Lord. Why? Because he realized God's goodness in his life. Bakit? Before he was saved, he was uh, a, 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 a bad person. He was disobeying his mom. He was a rebellious uh, man. But God saved him from that life. And God made him a minister of the word. And because of that, he's so gracious, uh, so thankful to God that he gives his time for God. Every, uh, every, every day he has a Bible study. Kahit nagaano kalayo, he will do that. He'll sacrifice his own time. Why? Because that is how he wants to honor the grace of God in his life. And that is how we should do this as well. Now, even though there are many things that are lacking in his life, maybe, maybe in his doctrine as well, but we cannot, uh, hindi, hindi ko matatawaran yung kanyang commitment sa gawain ng Panginoon. Why? If we really are appreciative of the grace of God in our life, we're going to make Him priority. And we're going to make Him as, uh, His work a priority in our lives as well. Magigilty po tayo dapat pag may inuna tayo kaysa sa gawain. We should be guilty when may una tayong gawin kaysa sa ministry at sa, sa Panginoon. Why? Because this is not honoring the grace of God. And as a conclusion, 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 and a challenge this morning, what is your response to the grace of God in your life? You're not perfect. You're committing mistakes. You're committing a lot of mistakes, maybe. But don't make those mistakes uh, your uh, uh, motivation na pagbayaran at, uh, to, to obey the Lord. But instead, despite those mistakes, look at the grace of God more. And because of that, serve the Lord more. Okay? If you make your mistakes, your priority you will burn, uh, your, your motivation, you will burn out. But if you make the grace of God you, our motivation, then God will supply the strength to keep on going for Him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you again for this Sunday school. And as we have uh, um, concluded chapter 10, I pray that you...